let's pray. Um, Father, we, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for bringing us to, um, to this day and this week. We thank you for your faithfulness uh, each and every day, Lord. We thank you for being the strength when we were, Lord, uh, weak. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom, Lord, uh, when we were when we lacked it, Lord. Uh, God, we, we just want to thank you for the peace, Lord, when, we, when there was so much confusion. Lord, we thank you for being the rock, for being our anchor, Lord. Just like shifting sands, God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, um, that you stepped in and everything changed. We thank you, Master, for such encounters. And even today, I just pray for uh, such things to continue to happen in each one of our lives, God. Uh, oh, where there is lack, oh God, I pray that you will step in and uh, yes, that we will acknowledge that you are more than sufficient for us, Lord. We thank you. We pray that you would change. We pray that you would rearrange our lives, Father God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Father God, uh, this morning, we just want to especially thank you that because you have called us uh, uh, to be royalty, to be sons and daughters of the Most High God, Lord, to be co-heirs with Christ. And Father, we thank you that uh, in your word, you have, uh, Lord, you have revealed uh, to, to live that out, Father God. And uh, we pray that we'll be careful to acknowledge that and um, receive that and follow that, Lord, and live that out, Father God, each and every day, Master. <clears throat> We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Um, you know, uh, to answer some of the questions that, uh, that were raised, um, I actually asked that same question which Mangi asked. Um, uh, I... Uh, asked pastor yesterday during our mentorship meeting uh, yesterday morning. So uh, Mangi's uh, question was right at the first um, first session, right? Uh, he had the question about, um, you know, why, um, uh, uh, when we were talking about hermeneutics and uh, we we're talking about how the the Bible does uh, is a progressive revelation. And the example given was about polygamy, you know, that Bible does not uh, condone Polygamy, nor does it command it. So, how do we address it? You know, we know that in the New Testament, that uh, you know, when with regard to marriage and with regard to serve um, in ministry and so on, the qualifications are that that uh, a man have one wife and so on. So, so how do we actually uh, address that? How do we? So that was Swangi's question, and I, I remember you know, we said we'll come back to it, right? So um, when I did my own study of it, I, I like uh, nothing was conclusive in the sense, you know, practically. Uh, I read about one one church, uh, one ministry, which was, uh, which was doing such, um, you know, uh, outreach work among such uh, 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 cultures where there was polygamy and it was permitted and so on. So, but then um, when they came to the Lord, right, so the policy was that uh, that person, you know, will not be used for ministry, will not be considered for ministry at all, uh, irrespective of, you know, uh, how uh, called they were, gifted they were by God and so on. So that person will not be considered. So uh, this person who, you know, uh, writes about how uh, he saw the lives of many people who were actually broken, right? They had come to the Lord, and uh, but they, they could not thrive, uh, in their ministry or in their God-given calling because um, this particular church or ministry said, you know, we're not going to use such people. You cannot be in ministry because this is what scripture says. So we, you know, we looked at that. So, so um, when we were discussing yesterday, so pastor answered that, you know, we said, yes, there is a standard, standard, scriptural standard that we, um, we have to live by. And that's the truth, but also being sensitive to, um, you know, uh, and, and that's the, you know, uh, the you know that's the truth. So there's no compromise on that. The, the standard, when which Bible calls sin a sin and so on, but also practically applying it, um, we need to be sensitive and uh, you know uh, because we are dealing with people, 
And so, you know, in this specific case, you know, um, what we discussed uh, was that, um, well, the person who has multiple spouses, you know, the person has to continue the responsibility of providing for the homes, providing for the children financially. Right? So the financial responsibilities has to be taken care of. And, uh, well, uh, the other thing was, uh, well, the church can, if the person is called to serve, um, well, the church can obviously, uh, you know, allow that person to serve and minister and so on, but with these conditions that they continues to, uh, you know, his financial obligations are taken care of, but he is not living with three, you know, uh, three wives. Right. So, so the so that's the so those are some things which need to be practically worked out so that people see also that yes, you know, scripturally he's living, um, and so on. So it's a case by case thing. Uh, so that is what we discuss. I think Mangi, uh, were you there, Mangi, yesterday um, in the mentorship meeting? No, Pastor, I wasn't. Oh, okay, okay. Probably you can watch the video, um, and uh, you'll get more clarity, right? So that was uh, quite an interesting uh, discussion. Okay, okay. Another question. I think this was uh, put up by. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe Sam. I, I, I think because uh, we had a discussion on similar lines. So um, about uh, homiletics, how can we innovate to meet uh, modern day culture? And uh, you know, because if you're using uh, those days, there were no TVs, no cell phones, um, nothing to distract in the manner that uh, the, we have now. You know, things are complex. Things are more. Uh, 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 there are more things to distract, etc. So, how do we innovate in order to preach in a way that uh, uh, that meets the, you know the the demand of today's thing? So, I think we we talked about it uh, a little bit uh, in one of the classes where we say that okay, media is there, social media is there, it's uh, technology is there. We use it to the max, right? At the same time, we we are also while we are talking about the ministry of the word, I think we looked at that. We use that, but don't water down, don't compromise on the message because the message of the cross uh, cannot be compromised. The message of the word cannot be compromised because it is the word that has power. It is the word that carries power. So we need to do it in a way that's um, that's relevant, that reaches um, the the hearts and minds of people of the audience. You know, today's audience. At the same time, um, not really. So, so it's again, you know, uh, we uh, make sure that happens, and that, that's a challenge. Right? That's a challenge uh, for any any media that you use. That's a challenge, you know, be it print, be it um, thing to cut through the clutter, right? And also the fact that people have so little attention spans, and and I think some of the Platforms actually kind of cater to that, right? Thirty seconds, or like Instagram, and and uh, so on, half a minute, one minute videos. So, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's a challenge, but also an opportunity, right? A very uh, challenging opportunity to present. Um, yeah. Okay, and people are also coming out with comics, um, like for the adult um, audience, right? Uh, interesting comics uh, with humor uh, with the message in order to reach uh, the audience so it's uh, it's really cutting through the clutter it's uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not something that's it's a very unique and and so God will give the you know ideas and so on yeah so illustrators artists you know creative writers I think uh, you know you just need to rise up and uh, you know take your rightful place and really ask god lord what can i do and how can i you know present uh, things innovatively right okay and there's another question which is uh, okay according to the biblical sense of preaching are there differences between the words preaching teaching mentoring um you know uh, did paul mentor timothy or did he preach to timothy via his epistles who is a preacher an evangelist a teacher prophet i think uh, that difference we are we actually studied you know um between the fivefold ministry you know preacher evangel i'm sorry um 
an evangelist pastor um uh, the apostle pastor evangelist pastor uh, prophet and teacher so that differentiation we learned um but preaching the word preaching definitely refers to heralding or uh, uh, or declaring uh, the truth proclaiming the truth did paul preach to timothy or did he mentor him definitely you know uh, paul mentored him because he um, he uh, was like a father to him and we read that in the epistles the paul timothy you know relationship and you see you know he, he writes timothy and he say you know timothy you you know you've um, followed me carefully right uh, he says uh, you you have followed the doctrine the manner of life you have watched me okay so in that sense um, uh, the kind of relationship that he had was 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 a mentoring relationship uh, um and also you know he says hold fast the pattern of sound words that you heard from me um and you commit these to others other faithful men who will be able to teach also which means that uh, he did not um he also there were times of teaching uh, there were times where uh, timothy was also in the audience where paul preached and is referring to that and he says you know this pattern of sound words don't hold i mean don't um, uh, lose in your grip on them and we see in timothy uh, in first timothy and second timothy uh, the importance of doctrine and uh, in the paul exhorting timothy to rightly divide the word and so on so there were these moments of preaching and teaching and there were these moments where um you know paul also uh, is appealing to timothy and say you've seen my life the manner of life the kind of um, you know what i did and how i lived and so on and so that um was in uh, it was a kind of a mentoring uh, kind of a relationship so yeah so um in terms of the word preaching well that is um, it refers to proclaiming heralding and paul did both right i hope uh, that answers the question whoever has put that up okay so shall we describe that as social gospel okay so kennedy um what we are using as no social gospel actually refers to something else i have not done a lot of study on that but it's actually um uh refers to um the gospel um or the good news being taken to alleviate um uh you know the the needs of man the, the human felt needs of man like uh, uh maybe you know feeding the poor or um, you know people who are uh, being trafficked and you know uh, so it's it's refers to that so social media gospel through social media it that is not social gospel if you're referring to that um but uh, when they when people normally say social gospel it is uh, about uh, doing work or social work that elevates the the human um you know human condition like poverty and um, maybe um you know employment and those kind of things um, yeah okay so just i want to take a few minutes to ask uh, you know how was um uh your experience in sharing the gospel you know i i know that uh, that that weekend we said okay uh we'll pray and ask god for uh, you know uh, divine appointments divine uh, so anyone did you if you can just share what was your experience um maybe something to do with the writing maybe something to do with uh, you know connecting with person someone over the phone um anyone um um nothing at all really i'm surprised i'm sure there are at least a couple of you know instances um you can either put it in the chat or you know share that um yeah no, the okay the question was rupa uh, um you remember a couple of weeks back we we looked at um yeah we were actually asking about we had this whole time 
of sharing how the gospel reached us, how it was preached to us. And then uh, I think that same day we was, we was saying, okay, now this weekend, look out for opportunities and uh, divine opportunities, orchestration. So you can be a blessing, you know, the same way you were blessed by the gospel, which was preached to you, that you would reach out. Uh, so basically, you're just looking at, okay, how uh, be sensitive to the spirit of God when he brings us to people or uh, to share the gospel. So, yeah, so we're just talking about that, you know, were there any instances where you could share the gospel, um, whether face-to-face -face or through online, um, you know, so we're just uh, talking about that. Any, any testimonies, any experiences from that weekend till now, you know, online, okay. Okay, you, would you like to share a little bit how that happened? And um. sir, we uh, every evening, except for Sundays, we meet for a time of prayer in the evenings on Zoom, okay. six okay. thirty to eight o'clock. So uh, most of them they bring their uh, unbelieving. Uh, friends from other faith who are okay. in need. So that's how I was able to, whenever I come across uh, people like that joining us on Zoom, we share, I share the gospel with them. So last week, one uh, seeker, she is studying in a Kasturba college, uh, school, in uh, a government school. She is searching and that teacher connected her to the group. So I was able, we were able to share the gospel with her. Okay. The reason okay. we don't, we don't know yet, but we shared the gospel. Right. Thanks. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Good to hear that. Thanks. Anyone else? Um, okay. Um, yeah. Just watch out for you know those moments that God would open up and uh, you know I had a interesting <coughs> like an everyday thing I, just, I was just going to buy some uh, gro uh, get some grocery and um, so there was this cold storage section and uh, so there was this uh, lady who was there like she was in some kind of a uniform I think she was a salesperson promoting some cheese and all that so um, but she was on the phone and she was crying and uh, when I went there with the basket and I was just looking around and then she quickly cut the call and she, you know, tried to wipe her tears. And, and then she said, um, sir, can I just, uh, you know, talk to you about this, uh, this laughing cow cheese, you know, the cheese brand name was laughing cow. And it seems so, you know, paradoxical that she was crying and she was talking about laughing cow cheese. And she said, can I, then I, then I just asked her, uh, you know, uh, no, no, I just want to know, like, is everything okay with you? Right? Are, are you okay? Then she said her daughter was very young and then um, very small, and she has a wheezing problem, so she had difficulty breathing, and because of that, she couldn't come to the come report to work on time, and she was late by twenty minutes. And then her a team leader was really, you know, uh, kind of reprimanding her, giving her a hard time, and uh, she said, you know, they're not understanding. You know, this is the thing. It's a very small girl, etc. And then. Fine. So then I, I just shared a testimony about uh, about the Lord Jesus and how how I got healed of he wheezing. You know, I had a because it was wheezing. I immediately uh, so I just shared. You know, this is what happened, and this is what happened on the cross. That the Lord Jesus He died on the cross, not only for our sins but also for our sickness. And uh, you know, this is what happened to me many years ago, more than fifteen years ago, more than twenty years ago. Uh, this is what happened to me. The person who prayed for me. You know, shared about this, and uh, that Jesus took my sickness on the cross, and I just, you know, kind of shared the gospel with her, and then she said, "Yeah, yeah we also believe in, um, you know, Isu Masi, and uh, uh, I think maybe she was m Muslim, you know." Uh, so she said, uh, "Yeah." Then I said, "You know, tonight why don't you go and pray? Okay, you go and pray for your daughter, and you pray this, you know, pray believing that uh, Jesus, you took my sin on the cross, and you took my sickness. You know, you took my daughter's sickness, my daughter's sin on the cross, and therefore, uh, I I believe that you do did that, and by your sacrifice, 
that they shed blood. Uh, I am healed and my daughter is healed. And I want to thank you, you know, for that. So I don't know what happened. So I just shared that and I was, uh, I was grateful that I could do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So just um, to be open to such moments, you know, everyday moments, uh, whether you're shopping, whether you're wherever you are. I'm sure like most of you are doing that, but uh, just want to encourage us to to be really open to that and, and take those opportunities, seize those opportunities to share um, the gospel. Right. Okay, um, so let's look at, uh, let's continue with our class. Let's continue with our notes. Um, we were looking at chapter six, right? Page 16 in our notes, chapter six, we were looking at uh, how to study the word of God. We saw in the previous chapter, the, the importance of the word, the importance of ministering the word, that the word um, the content um, of the word, the truth of God's word, need to be our content when we are communicating, when we are preaching, and uh, the importance of that. Uh, we saw all that, and we last class we looked at uh, different ways by which we can study the word, right? Uh, word study, or a topical study, uh, or uh, a character study, a book study, inductive study, and so on. So we we looked at that. So when it comes to studying, again. When it comes to interpretation, of course, you would have handled this particular thing in detail during um, your hermeneutics class. Um, but here is a simple, you know, interpretation plan. You know, suppose there is a passage, and uh, it seems to have information that seems to, you know, doesn't really make sense, or it seems to contradict. Then, uh, you know, how do I interpret that? Right. So here are some uh, here are some thoughts. Um, the first one, of course, is to identify the problem in the passage, you know, and show the opposing views, uh, which which really make it a problem. You know? And um, for example, I was just thinking of uh, one Corinthians twelve, thirteen, fourteen, which um, which we, you know, uh, which talks about the gifts, uh, particularly about tongues and so on. Um, and uh, you know, you you look at that, and then you see the gifts are being listed. And then we go further down in 12, and Paul asking this rhetoric question, are all apostles, are all miracle, uh, are all prophets, and so on, and are all, do all have gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues? Okay. And then he goes on to say in verse, uh, sorry, chapter 14, he talks about tongues. He talks about he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. He who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues. So here is here he is asking in a rhetoric question for which the obvious answer is no. Uh, where he is asking that question, you know, do all speak with tongues? And here he is, you know, saying, I wish you all spoke with tongues, meaning that. You know, you 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 know. This is my desire that you all spoke with tongues, and even verses before that, you know, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. Okay, fourteen and verse one, we're saying uh, desire spiritual gifts. And what is the what is the purpose of the desire? Desiring spiritual gifts. The, the purpose is that I will walk in it, you know, receive it, and walk in it. Um, again, uh, you know, chapter twelve. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, the end of that chapter, earnestly desire the best gifts, again, plural, and so on. So the thing is, um, you know, so it seems to have these opposing views, you know, speaking tongues, praying tongues. And of course, we know, you know, we've studied that. But for example, if you, you know, take a chapter like that, identify the problem, show the opposing views, okay, which make it a problem, list the realistic alternatives. Uh, alternate uh, alternative interpretations okay the unrealistic interpretation you omit it but what are those alternatives list those things okay um write out the thought development of the entire book okay i'm on page uh, 16. Uh, what does the entire book talk about obviously the corinthian church and he's writing you know section by section now concerning this, now concerning this, now concerning this, now concerning sexual immorality, now concerning, you know, he's talking about addressing several things, now about head coverings. And here he's talking about now concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be ignorant. So he's he's talking about that. Uh, that is the, 
you know thought development so he's addressing uh, specifically talking about spiritual gifts um, in this particular passage the historical background does it throw any light well historical background you see that um, here's the church corinthian church he spent about uh, one and a half years there it seems to be a very spiritually vibrant church with a lot of problems a lot of challenges um and uh, well that's about it that's we that is what we see but we see that there were you know spiritually um, because paul writes also in the first chapter that i see that you come short in no spiritual gift and so on and uh, and if you look at the historical background of the church well you see that it was a very thriving uh, church and so on um and okay are there any key words and uh, which we can study which can throw light okay in this example no but are there any keywords that we can use okay um like we can find the definition of that word in uh, in the in a biblical dictionary or we can use a concordance to see you know how is it used this particular word how is it used in scripture uh, or what are the uses by the the same author how does paul use it in different places you know, uh, in, in the new testament and so on and we can also check the references right to see uh, exa- uh, an example would be an analytical concordance you know an analytical concordance which talks about um, the meaning of the word the wherever the word is um, wherever wherever the word is present in scripture um, like we said you know we we looked at some of the tools that we can use for word study similar to that we use the concordance uh, i'm sorry to look at uh, where the scriptures use where the references are there and arrive at you know an interpretation right so um, list the pro and co- con evidence for each interpretation uh, evaluate the relative weight and value of each piece of evidence and decide which interpretation best, best fits uh, the weightiest and most valuable evidence um and now the application and what is the application for the original audience what is the application for the you know universal audience and for me personally what would be the application okay. so now, now these are you know you can just go through it these are simple um, uh, guidelines for us to you know take a problem passage and uh, and you know arrive at interpretation right so we using our minds we are using our uh, uh, you know uh, skills of analysis and so on but of also you know we know that we are relying on uh, relying on the spirit of god uh, to to point uh, to point to to highlight you know even as we are going through even as we are reading this right um okay so um so when we read through for this particular example um when we read through we here uh, we read about the gifts we see that okay it's not exclusive it is plural which means it is for everybody uh this pursuing and desiring is for everybody and it's so that everybody might obviously walk in it and uh, receive it and walk in it right and uh, and the end of the passage also talks about uh, uh, you know uh, some of those uh, uh, some of those arguments that people might have uh, like if i pray in a tongue uh, you know my understanding is unfruitful and so on so we see that there are different kinds of tongues we understand that then at the end of the passage uh, verse 39 you know earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues so obviously it was kind of widely prevalent and multiple people were speaking in tongues let all things be done decently and in order so so you know we have this information right and then we put it together and and then we see that okay in uh, in that particular verse it is talking about ministry appointment okay so there are different kinds of tongues here he's talking about ministry appointments everybody obviously can evangelize but he's here he's talking about is everyone an evangelist are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers are all workers of miracles he's talking about ministry appointments and in the same uh, vein or in the same 
thought he's asking that same question about do all pray with tongues do all have uh, do all speak with tongues do all interpret so obviously he's talking about ministry appointment in the church because he goes on later to pursue people to encourage people to actually uh, pursue these gifts to pray in tongues and so on uh, right and he also gives his own example his own testimony uh, in chapter 14 verse 18 i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all and then he's talking about yet in the church i would speak a few words a fi- uh, uh, five words with my understanding that i may teach others also then 10000 words in a tongue and so on so that which brings the other aspect of the public ministry of tongues so we we understand right all this okay um right from the context here when we study the context we 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 receive the interpretation um of that particular passage or of that particular and that we are grappling with uh, from the context itself uh, these these proofs actually uh, these truths jump out at us right so um so that was um, uh something that we can use uh, for interpretation if there is a um this was a simple example i'm sure there are more complex examples that we can take and try it out right okay so let's look at um, chapter 7 and uh, see we uh, when we look when we look at chapter 7 and see how the lord jesus ministered the word okay how did the lord jesus uh the living word the eternal word how do he minister the word um and what can i learn from it as a preacher or as a communicator uh of the word right what can i learn from that so here uh, let's look at a few uh, verses here let's look at a few scriptures uh, the first thing is uh, from isaiah 50 and verses of 4 to 5 which is uh, again a prophetic uh, scripture referring to the lord um Isaiah 50 verse 4 and 5 The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary he awakens me morning by morning he awakens my ear to hear as the learned the Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious nor did I turn away so um to speak a word in season to him who is weary okay so so that is uh, something um uh, uh, that the lord the way in which he ministered a word in season so that that would mean that um you know when we when we consider the gifts we would see maybe it's a word of knowledge a word of wisdom uh, a timely word a word in season right uh, it would even be a word of uh, encouragement a word uh, or encouragement and exhortation and comfort which could be a a prophetic word uh, a word in season so as we are ministering uh, the word uh, or preparing to minister the word uh, we see this as an example so we this is something that we can um, we can uh, follow ourselves that we can rely on god we can rely on the holy spirit to give us a word in season right so so the understanding is this that god knows our audience uh, better than ourselves and while we 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 use our intellect and we see okay this is the age group uh, of the audience so therefore you know these illustrations will make sense this will not make sense okay these are children therefore uh, you know this will make sense you know these are some things that we can come up with right um but the fact is that the lord knows the hearts uh, of people uh, better than we know right therefore the lord knows what the actual need is the lord knows what the challenges are the lord knows what the struggles are okay and uh, a word in season is like um, something that refreshes the heart something that transforms people's lives right um, and it can be a word in season that really uh it can be a life or death matter like for people um i remember once we um 
we had this uh, this uh, this actually came in uh, this email came in after a sunday service and in that particular service we sang um, the song um god is fighting for us i forget the title of the song god is fighting for us you know i will live i will not die and proclaim uh, your name on high right uh, it's a song by uh, darling jack uh, god is fighting for us so um, we sang the song and then for some reason we we kept um, you know repeating this line i will live and not die and proclaim your name on high and that part you know see normally when uh, the instruction to the worship team is that you know don't repeat for the sake of repeating you know certain things if if there is the weight of the holy spirit on a certain truth and if if the lord is uh, leading you to do that then you repeat it as a you know you repeat it because then it is a reiteration of that you know emphasis of that um so you repeat it so that's the general you know instruction for the team right so that day we were just repeating this and then um and then we got this email saying that this lady of course it's it was not a preaching but uh, i just thought of this because we were uh, it was after the worship time so the person actually uh, wrote back saying that she wanted to take her life um end her life so she thought okay let me just attend one service and end my life you know let me just go to church for the last time and uh, because she felt that uh, the problems that too much she was too overwhelmed by things happening in her life we don't know the details of it but uh, she just said you know maybe death or something i don't know so she said she said okay i'll just attend for one last time and then do it um, but that day when we and she mentioned you know this song you know we kept uh, singing it over and over again this these lines and and something happened to her and there's there was faith Uh, in her heart she was a believer but she lost all hope but now this faith and hope revived in her to such an extent that um, she said you know i uh, i'm going to live you know she was singing it i will live and i will not die um, and then um, there was so much faith so much hope in her that she she decided okay i i'm going to live you know i'm going to i'm going to uh, let god handle this i'm going to live now what has not changed was the problem you know the problem was still the same the service was over she went back the problem was still the same but there was major change in her right? and she was now strong enough um and full of hope full of faith um that she would be able to face uh, uh face whatever impossibilities were there like with the help of god so um she was completely you know completely transformed right so so that was a timely word for her and very timely right it was a matter of life and death but it was a it was a timely word for her so we can you know we can ask the lord lord what is that what is it that you want me to share you know uh, i just want to speak a word in season or we can say lord let what you're putting in my heart to prepare to share uh, let it be a word in season a word that refreshes the hearts and minds of people a word that snatches people from darkness into light a word that really uh, holds back people think of the lord let it be a word in season right um because uh, if you look at the scripture you know this is what happens that uh, um a word in season to him who is weary obviously it is to strengthen strengthen the heart that is weary right um and i'm sure that all of us we are recipients of word of word in season right and it uh, if you just ask people to share i'm sure you, most of us will have testimony of how a word in season came to us and very interesting ways right um so why not we be ministers of the word in season right intentionally ask the lord lord you you give me the thoughts you give me the thing sometimes it can be just the illustration that you're sharing the story that you're sharing that uh, that is a word in season and and um, so that it can happen you know where god puts you puts the, the word in your heart you don't even know it 
right you it comes to you as a revelation you don't know whether it's going to you know bless people's heart in that manner but you were just faithful to go ahead and uh, carry it out and it blesses the hearts of people so that's the thing and many times we uh you, you know it, it's not like you didn't even uh you didn't even plan to say it right but uh, god just dropped that thought in your heart and you went ahead and shared that anyway and you didn't plan to share that you didn't you didn't you know premeditate on it it wasn't part of the notes um but you you had this compulsion to share it and you shared it anyway and you didn't think too much about it right and it happened um it is almost as if it was an act right you mentioned it casually and that was what um uh, it was word in season right for that person so um Uh, he, but we see that when we yield ourselves the lord you know puts that he awakens us he opens our ears and puts that word in season so that it will be there to strengthen the person who is here so the lord jesus you know ministered uh, in the, in that manner and if you look at uh, his conversation with the woman at the well it was many times you know we see that it was these were you know like those moments those appointments and it was that thing which changed people sakius on the tree uh zaki come down i need to i i i need to come to your house today uh with the woman at the well you know the the uh yes uh, you know you had five husbands and the one with whom you're living is not your husband a word it was a word in season and uh, that really change the destiny of people the way the lord ministered and and as people who are called to walk in his footsteps we can do the same thing right uh, and we can look forward to doing that okay the second thing that we see is that he spoke what he heard the father speak so he was in constant communion with the father and uh, he was receiving uh, from the father and so he spoke what he heard the father speak uh, john 8 26 to 28 i have many things to say and to judge concerning you but he who sent me is true and i speak to the world those things which i heard from him they did not understand that he spoke to them of the father then jesus said to them when you lift up the son of man um you know then you will know that i am he and i do nothing of myself but as my father taught me i speak these things so for us you know as new testament ministers you know praise god we have uh, the holy spirit who teaches us who reminds us of the of the words of the lord jesus who guides us into all truth and uh, <coughs> who who inspires us who shows us the things that we need to be speaking so um the lord ministered in that way he was in constant communion with the father and he spoke so so also uh, us right uh, we don't want to speak out of our own selves and um, you know but we want to speak those things um, that god wants to communicate now we are not negating preparation we are not negating the use of the mind right uh, because these are things that god has given us okay and uh, and yes even in that you know in the preparation in our uh, you know using of our minds to analyze and things the lord leads what is the father saying what is the holy spirit saying right we so we um, so we receive those things and we speak those things um and why do we do that well we have it as an example and obviously there is fruit right there is fruitfulness there is um you know at the end of it there is that good fruit that comes out of it and then so so we do that right okay thirdly um he spoke with wisdom extraordinary wisdom um which uh, which wowed the people like they could not even the ones who were uh, opposing even the ones who had come to arrest they said oh we've never heard anyone speak like this before okay uh, john chapter 7 verses 44 to 46 now some of them wanted to take him but no one laid hands on him uh, 
Then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, Why have you not brought them? The, of, the officers answered, No one ever spoke like this man. Okay, no one ever spoke like this man. Um, same thing we see in Matthew 13, verse 54. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Where did this man get this wisdom? Um, so the wisdom, the, the, the supernatural ability um, of signs and wonders combined with it, um, which was which was which people could not refute. Okay. Now the Lord is making that available for us by his spirit. Right? Um, by his spirit. We we are one spirit with him. And we are recipients of the wisdom of God. We have the mind of Christ. Uh, and the Lord wants to display his wisdom uh, through us, the church, right? So um, we don't do anything to shut it off, but, but we really receive with all humility and, uh, and then you know, share that with the world, right? So uh, wisdom, uh, preaching the wisdom of God, wisdom of Christ. Um, the fourth thing that we see is that he spoke with authority. He spoke with authority. Um, Luke 4, verses 31, 32. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbaths. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. And another place, you know, they, you know, they say that it was not like the Pharisees and scribes, for he spoke with authority. He spoke with authority. Um, uh, the weight of, uh, you know, personal experience, the the weight of conviction, the weight of, you know, application, living it out, you know, all that gives uh, the authority which was, with which to you know, uh, share. So the weight of authority, he's ministered, he declared the word as one with authority, okay, wisdom, authority. Right. So we have that as an example for us uh, to follow. He ministered with a meek heart. Okay. It was, um, uh, again, this is amazing to see that the Son of God coming and ministering, walking on the earth, being filled by the Holy Spirit, and doing those amazing signs and amazing wonders, and walking in all humility. Right. Uh, it's, it's amazing to see that. Um, and we have that as our role model. We have him as our role model. Okay, ministering with a meek heart. You know, Matthew eleven twenty eight twenty nine. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. So. Um, so the Lord Jesus uh, testifying of himself and describing himself, uh, gentleness and uh, being lowly in heart, right? uh, being humble, being meek. And that was this, uh, uh, that is how he ministered. Okay. Uh, a few other things, uh, but we'll pick it up in the next class. Um, but we see that the Lord Jesus as our role model and in the way he ministered the word and and it is for us it is for us okay, the way he ministered uh, it is for us to follow uh, that example for us to follow and um, John chapter 14 and verse 12 the Lord says he who believes in me the things I will do he will do also and greater things than these right so it involves the way he ministered the word and uh, we will do also right? as we believe in him and as we follow uh, his footsteps. Right? Okay, so we'll stop here. Any, any things that, uh, anything that you want to add, any thoughts that you might have or any questions, um, anything that you want to add? Anyone? Okay, uh, 
Can I ask, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Maggie. Yeah. Okay. Um, my question comes from chapter six on. Uh, okay. Problem with uh, a section uh, that says the problem, yeah, yeah. problem with uh, interpreting. Uh, okay, the last scriptures. section of chapter six. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't. Uh, please help. I don't understand when people say that passages are uh, difficult scriptures, because when when we read scriptures, they are true and they are, they are straightforward in what they say. They, mm. If we read scriptures, they, they will tell us what they, they are, what God wants to say about us. So I don't understand when people say that uh, scriptures are diff difficult to understand. I don't know if you can help me mm. with that. So. Yeah, yeah. For example, you know, um, it's 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 that okay. Maybe it's um, uh, like, for example, the, the the scriptures that we saw right now. Uh, we if uh, if we are looking at it uh, exclusively, if you look at one Corinthians twelve twenty eight exclusively, we might come to a certain conclusion that praying in tongues is not for everyone. And I might teach that. I might build a doctrine based on that. Right, so, uh, so that is that is something that could happen. Um, for example, I'm just looking at uh, you know First Timothy chapter two, um, and uh, you know this is something which is again, you know, a major controversy uh, and uh, in church, right? Oh, First Timothy chapter two verse eleven: Let a woman learn in silence, with all submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but be in silence. Um, so, you know, a verse like that, right? So now, now you know that Paul had, uh, during Paul's time, there were women who were ministering. Aquila, Priscilla, you know, husband and wife, they were ministering. You read about Andronicus Jr., who was an apostle. Now, then what is Paul's intent in you know writing this, right? So a casual reading of it will say, okay, uh, women don't teach, right? But you know that when you study the historical background and you see that uh, he's writing to the women in Ephesus and uh, the kind of uh, challenges they had and and so on. So so that is what, when you know people do have difficulties. You know it could be an intellectual difficulty, not really able to make sense, or it could be something. You know, spiritual in nature, in the sense that uh, you know, certain truths are, you know, that we need the, you know, uh, the revelation of the spirit of God. And I might be a natural man, not being able to understand that, uh, because these things are received, you know, spiritually discerned, as Scripture says. So, um, so that could be some problems. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, Scripture, um, the Holy Spirit reveals, He it describes, but at the same time, we cannot ignore the fact that there are certain passages which are right, complex, complicated, right? So that's the thing I need. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, as as you, exp you were explaining there, I, I just had uh, this thought that when we, we are reading a letter, we should read, read the letters as a letter, like the whole letter to understand what the writer mm. of the letter is talking. So we cannot... Uh, Reads only one verse, one chapter in 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 a in in, in brother Paul's letter, apostle Paul's letter, and then say we understand all we know the meaning. So we must read the whole letter from the beginning to right. the end. To right. Actually understand the letter. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So you guys have a great weekend. God bless. Uh, we'll catch up next week. Okay. Okay, have a great time again, you know, sharing the gospel, ministering to someone um, this weekend. Okay, bye bye. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you.